Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, dear viewers everywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Peace be unto all of you. Uh, before we begin, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him for all the bounties that were given or had been given to us and had been given to us all the time for every human being. Uh, today we are going to do uh, the same thing that we used to do before. We are going to reflect, to make some reflection upon uh, some of the verses. Today I selected a verse for us. It's one verse, one line. It's a very simple verse. It talks about the Qur'an. Uh, we mentioned some qualities of the Qur'an, that it's a book of guidance. Today, uh, it's uh, something, one quality of the Qur'an we'll add to the guidance is that it's a book of healing. It heals people. Let's see the text first and let's read it and then we'll explain it and then reflect upon it. Uh, the text, as you see on the screen, it reads, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وننزل من القرآن ما هو شفاء ورحمة للمؤمنين ولا يزيد الظالمين إلا خسارا uh, The meaning of this can be translated into and we sent down or we send down from the Quran that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe in Islamic monotheism and act on it, who believe in the Quran. And it increases the right, the Zalimin, that means the ungrateful people like uh, polytheists and the wrongdoers it increases nothing but loss. It adds to them loss. So the Quran here from this we can understand that it functions in two ways. For the believers, for those who believe in it, it increases their faith and it becomes a source of healing and a source of mercy for them. And at the same time, for the unbelievers, for the polytheists, for the mushrikeen, for the wrongdoers, the wrongdoers, it affects them negatively because they don't perceive it the right way. It adds loss to them because they feel sorrow because they don't improve and don't benefit from it. Let's see how the Quran works as a shifa. You can, if you are a Muslim or non-Muslims, you can see. Uh, any situation where the Qur'an is recited upon any people, and I still remember an author in America whose name is Caesar. Uh, he wrote a wonderful book about Islam, called it Islam, and in one of his chapters talked about the effect of the Qur'an, and he said that this book makes the strongest and the toughest men on the earth cry. When they hear it, it's so powerful that its impact cannot be resisted. It affects the human heart. And this is a healing for the human heart. By the way, you know that sometimes you go to some uh, people who give you advice that you, you, you need to cry from time to time to keep your heart soft because I'm not talking about any type of cry. This is particular type of cry here when you feel the presence of Allah, when you feel the magnitude of Almighty Allah, when you feel the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you and when you are by yourself, you remember Almighty Allah and your tears roll down your cheeks. And in this way you are affected and you feel that you are fresh. You can see this very clearly 
When a person has a problem or a dispute or anything with anyone, probably at home, and he leaves the home to go to the mosque, and after the prayer he comes back as if he is a new person. And that's why the Prophet wasallam used to tell Bilal, uh, the, the, another expression of make iqama for salat, he used to say, Arihna biha ya Bilal. Let's get the, to the comfort of Salat, Bilal. Make the call for Iqama, for the Salat right now, because we get the comfort when we get into the Salat, simply because we recite the Qur'an. When we recite the Qur'an, it works as a healing for the problems and the disputes and the sufferings that we have. Because you communicate, we communicate with Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we recite the Quran. As you know that the famous hadith of the Prophet sallallahu who explained to us how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates with us when we recite the Fatiha. When we begin by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we know that Allah responds to us by saying, my servant praised me until the end of Surah Al-Fatiha. So it's a source of communication. When you communicate with the most beloved one, how comfortable you feel. This is just one way of feeling the comfort that you can get from the Quran and it heals, it heals the problems that you have. You can notice a lot of people, even the non-Muslims notice that the Muslims do much better in two seasons. One season is the season of Hajj because of the intensity of Ibadah that the Muslims do. And the other season is Ramadan, the month of Ramadan because again of the intensity of Ibadah. An average Muslim would cover the whole Quran whether by listening to it in the masjid or by reciting it himself. And some people even uh, complete the repetition or the recitation of the Quran more than two or three times in the month of Ramadan. Because of the, 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 the connection with the Quran and you read it more and more, it begins impacting the heart of a human being and it heals the problems and the sufferings that a person has. It has great impact on the Muslim to the degree that you can see it by yourself. Perhaps the least number of people who go to their psychi psychiatrists and psychologists are the Muslims. The, the, perhaps the least number who go to lunatic asylums are the Muslims. Perhaps the least number that commit suicide in the world are the Muslims. And the maximum number or the huge number of the people who commit suicide are not Muslims. In fact, they belong to the most advanced countries in the world. They belong to either Japan or Switzerland or some North European countries or the United States or most of them belong to the advanced countries because of the negative impact of materialism on them. Whereas the Quran gives you the good balance or the right balance between materialism and uh, spirituality. In other words, it cares for your soul as much as it cares for your body. It responds to your needs that's needed by any human being, the physical needs, and it responds to the needs, it addresses the needs that the soul wants. Our soul needs to be nourished or something, like our bodies needs to be nourished on something, on food, on fulfilling these foods and, and drinks that we need every day and fulfilling the, our desires, other desires. Again, similarly, our souls need to nourish on something. The only thing that our souls can nourish, can be nourished on is the Quran. This is very important. Again, I'd love to, yeah, correct some of the concepts, wrong concepts that people have. In one occasion, a person, she was a teacher in one of the schools in Dubai, and I was talking to her, and she said that I love music because 
it, it addresses the need of my heart. After some discussion, I told her, had it been the case, I would say that there would be something wrong with the Quran or something wrong with this religion, which is almost impossible because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most perfect and his book is the most perfect. I told her, as we know, that the Quran is the sustenance for our souls. This is the only thing that we can nourish our souls on. Nothing that can be done by a human being that would do that job. And when you're talking about music, yeah, right, it doesn't do that job at all because it's man-made. Otherwise, it should have been mentioned in the Quran that it has this role. And there is nothing in the Quran that says that. I said that this is, again, one of the fake concepts that had been spread by many people that music has an impact on the soul. <laughs> this is not the case because the majority of the people who listen to music are the ones who, yes, perhaps uh, commit suicide in these advanced countries that I mentioned earlier. So had it been the case, uh, it would have addressed the needs of their soul and they would have never been able to take this uh, wrong decision of committing suicide. Not only that, there may be some few Muslims who may commit suicide here and there, but we've never heard about a group of Muslims like what happens in Japan and some other countries that they commit suicide collectively. Again, this would be the effect of the Quran on the hearts of this is the reason the effect of the heart of the, the effect of the Quran as a healing tool on the hearts of the Muslims. Let me end up with this nice story that I heard long ago when an engineer from Kuwait went to study in Arizona and uh, the people were anxious in the exam. It was exam time. There was an exam and every one of them felt stressed. The exam seemed that it was very tough and he had a tape with him and he asked the teacher can I play the tape while we are answering the exam? I'm quite sure that it will relax the people. And the teacher agreed. He was very easygoing. And he started playing the tape. And the tape had Quran on it, uh, particularly Surah Ar-Rahman. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Ar-Rahman, allam al-Quran, khalaq al-insan, until the end of the surah. And the people started relaxing and the and anxiety was uh, taken from them and they felt very comfortable and they started answering the question uh, to their astonishment when, this to, the, when, the, when the tape stopped. They looked at the teacher and they asked the teacher to replay the tape again. The majority of the students were not Muslims. There is only one Muslim who played uh, this Quran. So again, you can see the effect of the Quran not only on the hearts of the believers, but even to on the hearts of some non-believers. And this is an example of raising the anxiety from uh, those people because of the stress that they felt during the exam. There are hundreds of beautiful stories, and I wish that we had another opportunity to continue. But this is the end of uh, this episode. I thank Allah and I ask him to keep strengthening us to be on the path of Iman until we die and we meet him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu mamduh nurdin Muhammad. Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an am ala qulubin aqfaluha Afala yatadabbaroon al-Qur'an am ala qulubin aqfaluha Afala يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوب أقفالها أفلا يتدبرون